name is Amber Bissonette, and uh, I'm, I'm an ensemble member doing the 80 Solid Gold 2 at Stage West, and I have uh, recently relocated to Calgary. I now, now call Calgary home. Wow. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Andrew McGillivray, and uh, I'm an ensemble member in 80 Solid Gold 2. Hello, I'm Katrina Reynolds, and you can call me Kat. And this is, I think, my sixth or seventh production with Sage West. Um, I love it here. <laughs> Do a lot of the Christmas gigs. It's been great, and this one has been especially great. Yeah. Uh, so hi, my name is Chris Sams. I'm here in Calgary at Stage West doing. Uh, 80 solid gold too. And uh, what is your big career achievement to date that you'd like to point out? Of many. Um, I mean, this is, yeah. you've almost got a permanent residency here. I know, here. it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, each show I'm loving, each show. So like right now I'm just loving getting to sing the songs that I grew up singing and gone to karaoke many times and sang. So like Love Shack, I'm singing this. Money, money. Oh my God, pour some sugar on me. I'm having a blast. It's like bucket list. Every every song is amazing. Anything particular in your career you'd like to point out? Um, I think the thing that uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal, but I'm I'm really proud of it. Um, I am I'm born and bred and trained in Alberta, and my whole career has been in Alberta. I've never worked out of province. Artist. And I'm a full-time artist. <laughs> Something else. Yeah. And you've mentioned that before in conversations. That yeah. It's just remarkable that you can be... This is a very transient business to, to keep going. So that's a remarkable achievement. Yeah, lots of hard work. Um, uh, making great, uh, great pals that are uh, fun to work with. And yeah, just... Uh, yeah, hard work. Mostly hard work. <laughs> do you have a career highlight that you'd like to... You know what? I do, and I'm very proud of it. Uh, just this past spring, I was able to uh, make my way out to Vancouver, and I was working with the Arts Club on a production of In the Heights, and that has been probably one of the greatest things I've been, been able to be a part of in my career so far. Very... It was very fun. It was a, an amazing experience. How about yourself? Any particular career achievement so far? I mean, yeah. there's Broadway, there's so much to choose from. <laughs> yeah. That's probably a big one. That's definitely a bucket list achievement. Um, I kind of felt like, okay, yeah, if anything happens now, it's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got to be um, in, a, in a show on Broadway, which was cool. Started the Stratford Festival, Jesus Christ Superstar. Got to perform in the Tonys. That was massive for me. Yeah, life changing. What were some of the, the highlights for you of this particular um, show? Yeah, like I said, Love Shack is amazing. Um, I'm really liking, a, I'm singing the song Broken Wings, which wasn't one I would have chose for myself, but it's just, I'm loving it. And I like how that works out. You know, I wouldn't have chose it for myself. And it's a great moment I feel I'm having on stage with that. And yeah, I'm just having a blast. I get uh, Pet Shop Boys, uh, Tears for Fears, man. It's great. Wham! You can't go wrong. And uh, we still have yet to do any prints, so I see a 80 solid gold three somewhere down the road, maybe not next year. But a solid franchise. Or just a print show. I think we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I get to do a lot of fun people. I get to do some Bobby McFerrin, uh, Don't Worry Be Happy. I get to do MC Hammer, which a lot of the younger audiences seem to love. Um, I get to do Lionel Richie all night long, uh, Millie Vanilli, that's always fun. The, uh, yeah, that, that, that's a good one too. So who are some of the, and I think I, I, I can suggest uh, Bonnie Tyler was uh, one of the people that you, yeah, you covered? Yeah, Bonnie Tyler. I, uh, I, I get to do a couple karaoke favorites for sure. Um, totally Clips, I get to sing that song, and Love Shack. Yeah. So, you, any karaoke bar you go to, throughout the course of the night, you will hear both of those songs. <laughs> Always. Uh, so those go over uh, really, really well. Um, just uh, last night we had this amazing audience, and uh, when I got to that, Tim Rose, Rusted, I had to wait for the audience to calm down so I could say, Rusted, because they just went bananas. Like, they, yeah. they love that song. Um, I sing a Gloria Stefan song. Um, Sarah Horseman and I uh, rock a, a duet in a, a blonde men's set 
Uh, we uh, we tag team a White Snake song. I have such. This is one of my favorite shows that I've done here so far, just because of the list of singers that I get to cover. It's insane. Um, Aretha Franklin, Janet Jackson, uh, Pointer Sisters, Tina Turner. I mean, come on, so good, so good. Who else? Um, oh gosh, Deborah Will. Deborah. Uh, Deborah Will. Let's hear it for Denise Williams. Denise Williams. Denise Williams. Williams. Yeah, right. Williams. Oh, yes, <laughs> um, yeah, let's hear it for the boy. Just epic tunes. Some of my favorite music ever. It's yeah. It's been great. The music in this show is phenomenal. When I got that song list sent to me, oh my gosh, I was so excited. I couldn't wait to come out here. Yeah. Uh, did you get to choose any of the acts that you... No. Um, Tim and Conrad, they know our voices, so they just pick them, I think, perfectly. I think everyone in the show really hits mm -hmm. the perfect combination of mimicking the artist, but then bringing themselves into it. And that's really what Tim strives to get out of us is a bit of that mixture, you know? And, bring ourselves to the part, but still get the essence of what people know from that artist. Well, one of the things I pointed out uh, in my review was that uh, <clears throat> there's parts of this, it's not like a tribute show where you're uh, just coming in and imitating. There are points where you guys gather together, uh, gather together as a group and do a, a take, a whole new arrangement on mm -hmm. a song. Oh. And that is a, a real stunning effect for the show. Yeah, how did you like the uh, acapella oh, Michael Jackson? Is exactly. That cool? like those, like that is amazing. Yeah, yeah. You get to beatbox and then beatbox. <laughs> the choreography for this is spectacular. And not only that, you guys all prove that you can dance hard yeah. and not be huffing and puffing up there. So That's it's... Uh, it takes time. <laughs> yeah, there, there's no lip syncing. It's, it's no. quite an amazing... Yeah. Yeah, the only, uh, like, I mean, Conrad uh, uh, threw a couple of tracks to embellish, um, just uh, just basic, basic musical tracks, because we only have a four-piece band this time around, instead of, well, usually we have a five-piece band. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but the vocals are all, they are all real. <laughs> what is the best part of the 80s other than that? Was it the, the videos, the artists, the power ballads, uh, the metal? You know, I think for me... A lot, of, a lot of today's music is not as heartfelt or, or as good as 80s music was. I think a lot more time and energy went into the creation of writing these lyrics and these, these melodies. I think today people just don't put as much time or care into that. So that's what I love about the 80s music. There was a lot of heart put into it. So yeah. What's the best way to remember the 80s? Uh, is it the funny videos, the groundbreaking artists? Yeah, I think it is that the fashion and the music is so quirky and just so there's, I feel different pockets of quirk too. It's just such a fun time of just experimenting with music. Synthesizers were new, so all these new sounds were coming in and the hair. That flock of seagulls hair, I'll say, is probably the most ridiculous 80s thing ever. <laughs> That's not ever cool. <laughs> <laughs> and they're still around, so sadly. Like that little piano. I was like, who are you? <laughs> uh, was there anything else? What What made that 80s period so great, especially for music? Oh, I think, you know, it was really cool. I think that's kind of the first time where artists started influencing trends on a very large scale where, you know, Michael Jackson would wear a certain outfit in a video and the next week men would all be wearing these red leather jackets with the stripe and just mimicking him or the gloves or the haircut it was, I think it was the first time in that in uh, in musical history where we really see artists influencing fashion and um, and uh, uh, you know the way that people talked the way that they acted it, it was really uh, they set an example and kind of you know yeah, I don't know. I guess I guess I guess it was a, the first time that music really had that kind of uh, a push on a generation, and then you could see trends shift and change based on an artist's music video that has just come out or something. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. The 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 eighties, like just riffing on what you were saying before. The thing with the eighties is that it beca it became such a marriage of visual medium and music. Um, and that's, 
and it's, it's, it's something that I said in a couple interviews about the 80s, 80s solid gold one. I grew up in a dance studio. And so, like, I mean, I, I, I was born in the 70s, so I grew up through the 80s in a dance studio. Uh, and and uh, so, so the 80s for me is just this amazing marriage, this introduction of videos and idolizing dancers and, and um, artists that did dance, like Madonna, as like, she was amazing. But there were some horrible trends out of the 80s. What are some yes. of the worst trends you can remember? Well, I... As horrible as they are, I love them all, but I would say like the fitness craze, all that spandex and uh, leg warmers is pretty awful, but I kind of love that awfulness of it, and uh, I, I will leave it there. Because yeah, I like everything. Um, yeah, He-Man, awesome. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Do you have any particular uh, 80s trends that you I think we're the worst in the world. Let me think. Uh, for me, <laughs> for me, it's probably the mullet. I think the mullet is pretty bad. Um, <laughs> there's no excuse for it. And you know what? There was a guy in the audience the other night. Oh, no. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't say this. Who had a mullet? Um, and I, you know what? All power to you. If you can rock it, you can rock it, right? You know, just wear it with confidence. But I think the mullet was something that we look back on and it's not not the best fashion or beauty choice. How about yourself? What's a horrible 80s trend that you The may rat have lived tail. Through? Oh jeez. <laughs> Forget the about that. The rat tail. Don't get me wrong. I was a huge New Kids on the Block fan, but I was like, Jordan, you gotta lose that rat tail. Oh no. Honey. Yeah, no. <laughs> the rat tail. The mullet gets the attention, but I forgot completely about the rat tail. Yeah. <laughs> but like to, um, all of the other terrible 80s trends that people could think of, I actually still incorporate that into my fashion choices currently, so... <laughs> yeah, can't really come down on those too hard. <laughs> so, what's the worst 80s trend? That's going to be tough to beat rat tail. Oh, but... I know. Well, now that Ember said rat tail, I can't think of... <laughs> think of anything worse than a rat tail. That's just disgusting. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my gosh. Mullet, schmullet. Like, I'll take a mullet over a rat tail under. Um, I was going to say shoulder pads, but then I realized that the dress that I'm wearing to the New Year's Eve party has shoulder pads oh. in it. So that's not too bad. It's actually super cute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Everything old is new again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the 80s had some great fashion trends when they came out with the neon. I'm like, come on, that stuff is great. Yeah. yeah I think you got you got me with rat tail. Okay. That's what I mean. True. It's worse than that. There's nothing worse than that. Rat tail is trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.